In this video, I wanted to talk about the 12 volt power connectors. And in the meantime, as you can see on the footage, I'm also making a connector. It's very low current. It's not as tight as with normal PCs. So it's been a year or something with a 4090 and some of them burning through. In the end, it came down to a very tight margin, as I've spoken about in a previous video of mine. And there have been some stuff happening, especially like around the cable bending and also Intel releasing a new spec, the ATX 3.1, where they've made some changes to give a little more leeway in this connector. Um, you can also see in the, in the new spec that the connectors have been uh, are mandatory now, the receptacles as they call them. So there's a three, three dimple design and also, um, I guess, like a four curved parts design, which are mandatory for this connector. They are both a bit more stringent than it has been before. And if you look at like the standard Molex Microfit, which is what this connector actually is, then it's actually not a standard design that they are saying it's mandatory now. And the funny thing also is that if you look at their website and their standard connectors, then the highest standard connectors they have is 8.5 amps. And 8.5 amps is actually not even allowed to use if you have more of them in one connector. Usually when you have like a single conductor, it's allowed then the maximum current capacity per contact. And if you put more contacts on one connector, then you actually have to derate them. So it's less than 8.5. But 8.5 is the maximum for that. And in the meantime, in the Intel ATX 3.1 spec, they're saying, well, the minimum spec has to be 9.2 amps. So that's already more than any standard microfit, which has probably been used. So in that case, they will gonna have to use a special design. I, I bet Molex does have them. And if you, have, if you are a power supply manufacturer or a graphics card manufacturer, you can get them, but it is, a lot further from the standard and they they kind of had to do this because the connectors are just too small to figure out with standard connectors uh, i'm going to show some of the standard connectors too and here on this picture you can also see the new uh, the new mandated connector this is directly from the atx 3.1 spec apart from that there's also some extra testing that is required so one of those tests was what well, was already in place is the maximum te temperature rise when you're loading the connector up to the maximum temperature rise is 30 degrees and they're saying well, right now it has to be according to method eia 364-70 there's also some extra testing um, around the um, resistance of each pin so the saying as well so the resistance of each pin has to be less than six milliohms after initial insertion but also less than six milliohms after 30 times of plugging it in and removing it again which is acceptable uh, i guess it would also be covered by 30 degrees celsius but it is something you want to have very low resistance because any resistance you get it will also heat up the connector and what they're also saying is that the uh, the resistance of each pin cannot vary by more than 50% for the whole 12 volt group and then the whole common ground group. And this is because of a very specific issue where if you have one pin that has higher resistance than the other pins, or you have one pin that has a lot lower resistance than the other pin, what's going to happen is electrically there's going to be more current flowing through some pins and less through others. And when you have more current flowing to a single pin, then it will go over its spec, especially if you have no margins at all, of course. It will go over its spec and it will start heating up more. It will melt the plastic and then it's going to start a fire anyway. So especially the very big variations can actually cause a lot of issues because electricity is going to follow the path of least resistance, literally least resistance. So that's, I guess, it for the ATX 3.1. Uh, there has been, there's some other text about or around it. Um, of course, it was already a lot more involved than like the center connectors because the old 8-pin and 6-pin were the larger Molex mini fits, and these are the micro fits. So that already makes it a bit worse. And I guess that's been, the, um, yeah, that's the way they're going forward. They're going to keep using it. Of course, AMD has decided to not use it for the 7700 and 7800 XT 
which is also understandable because well the connector just doesn't work well uh, people have to buy extra connectors when you want to bend it around or in a certain case where you don't have enough space they have to get uh, adapters as well so there's like a lot of extra stuff you need just to think you're safe and then you might as well just put on two eight pins right uh, We'll see how it's going to happen, of course, NVIDIA is going to keep using the connectors, AMD has not has chosen not to, but maybe in the future they will. Um, I'm guessing that if they will, they will definitely do it for the very high power uh, GPUs, because putting three or four 8-pin uh, connectors takes up a lot of space on the PCB, so then you might be tempted, like NVIDIA was. So that's it for today, and uh, see you next time in the next one.